This has been one of those guns we've had for a little while and been sworn to secrecy. Well, today, the cat will be out of the bag, so to speak. This is the radical new bullpup from Calibre Gun, the Argus 45W. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today it's the turn of a gun that I think is going to unnerve some of the big named boys out there, both in design, engineering, style, accuracy and above all value for money. The first thing you notice is the design, which sets it apart from the standard round tubular shapes. They have dared to be radical in using angular square sections that they call the quadro design, together with the familiar cylinder shapes. So, without further ado, let's get straight to the walk-around, which is going to be pretty in-depth, because there is so much to look at. This new bullpup from Calibre Gun is 640mm or 25 inches short. I say short because it feels wrong to use the word long. It is terrific to see so many really short, balanced guns coming in from Europe and beyond. It weighs in at 3.5 kilograms or 7.7 .7 pounds unscoped. And the weight is perfectly balanced. And of course, being a bullpup, it's held nice and tightly into the shoulder and close to your own centre of gravity. This one is all black and dressed in a nice skeleton style wooden stock, which again carries that mix of curves and box style finish to it. Starting from the front then, the first thing you notice is that square front end, which carries the integrated moderator or suppressor or silencer that is pretty efficient in keeping the bark down. The barrel that it hides is 450 millimetres or 17.7 .7 inches long and is a 12 grooved choked item. Below this is the gauge or manometer which is larger than normal gauges making it easier to read. Still not the safest of places though at the business end but this little powerhouse does have a double safety system to give you a little bit more confidence. The gauge shows its maximum fill pressure of 300 bar for the 250cc air cylinder. That, depending on power levels, should be good for 70 shots or more, according to the manufacturer's figures. This shot count is going to be helped along the way with that inbuilt regulator that, again, they claim is good to keep the spread of shots down to around 5 feet per second. Surrounding this gauge is the housing for the filler cover, which is sprung-loaded to return back into place after using the supplied quick-fill probe, ensuring the dust is certainly kept well away. And, of course, you're not going to lose the cover. From this point back, the funky modern design continues with swept back top and bottom carrying weaver rails for the scope on the top and bipods or any other toys you may need on the bottom. They are both beautifully manufactured out of alloy and both have plenty of rail space to find the perfect position for whatever it is you're looking to use them for. Moving further back at the bottom, we come to the adjustable trigger, which is a two-stage item and comes from the factory quite light, which initially was a little bit of a shock, and I like a couple of flyers loose before I was ready. But once you settle down and concentrate on this, it is a real pleasure to use. Above this is where the ambidextrous nature of this starts to make itself known. The safety is on either side. And it's a simple design with up for safe and down for fire, with a red dot to show it's in fire mode. The only problem is the red dot is only on the right-hand side. 
may be something for them to address in a later model or variant. And I feel it could benefit from a slightly more defined click to it. Above this is the side lever cocking arm that is currently on the right hand side, but this is fully transferable over to the left hand side. This I would normally say is for the lefties out there, but recent experience has shown me there are a few right handed guys who like to have it on the left hand side so they don't have to come off the trigger. <laughs> Not a bad idea really. The action on this is really quite smooth and sure-footed and of course above all in the right place for a purpose-built bullpup and not right at the back. This is normally when a rifle has just been given a bullpup replacement stock. The square quadro design continues back along the block and even the optional wood cheek rest that has a rounded squareness to it. This does take off the coldness of the metal underneath, but I feel the shape could be slightly improved upon to give it just that little bit more comfort. Watch this space. Behind this is the magazine slot to house one of the two supplied 14 shot rotary dual mode all machined alloy magazines. This is the 2.2 or 5.5mm version, but there is a 4.5mm or 177 calibre option available if you prefer. When it comes to magazines, I really don't think many companies have got it absolutely right. Some of them are as big as dustbin lids and can block out the sun like a total eclipse. Others are so fiddly with reverse drop and then rotate and you need three pair of hands. This solid feeling magazine is a simple drop in and rotate system that I found to be easiest to load if the cutout on the magazine is lined up on the left hand side of the elongated entry hole, otherwise the pellet can drop all the way through. Hence the elongated entry hole. Simple. Whilst we're looking at the magazine, it's worth talking about the dual action on this because it has the ability to simply index automatically or you can, with the use of the side lever, lock the magazine from rotating, meaning after firing and even decocking, no round is loaded into the barrel and basically leaves the gun in a safe mode. This can also be used as a method of preventing double loading. I realise this isn't a totally radical safety idea, but it does add to the safety options on this gun. Again, no bad thing in my opinion. To load this into the gun, simply pull back on the cocking lever and slot it in around the retaining bar in the breech. Then push forward on the slide lever and you're in. Locked and loaded as it were. It does also fit really neatly and flush into the gun, showing them what thought they've actually put to making this. To remove it, you really need to pull back on the side lever cocking arm and then push out from the left hand side. An interesting point and another safety aspect to mention here is the bold red pronounced stud at the rear of the gun. When the gun is cocked, this will protrude out about four millimeters to show it is potentially hot, as it were. If it's flush, it's in a safer mode, and you know it's not cocked. I'm already starting to like this well-designed little darling. Also, at the rear, there is a loop attachment for a single point harness. Nice. I suppose the next thing to look at is the wooden stock, which again carries that mix of shapes with curves and squares as well. The grip is really very comfortable and stippled for extra grip. And the cutaways keep this lighter overall. 
as well as adding to the interesting design. The end is finished off with a rubberized butt pad. It would have been nice to see this as an adjustable pad, but it certainly isn't any sort of deal breaker. Well, I think that's pretty much most of the info around this, apart from the fact that this is, of course, available in sub 12 foot pounds or FAC full power version, if preferred, and allowed where you are. Talking about power, let's just see what this one is producing in its sub 12 foot pound guise. Using pretty standard JSB 15.89 grain pellets, it saw a maximum of 581 feet per second, which is 11.91 foot pounds or 16.15 joules. So far, so good. Nicely close up to the 12 foot pound limit. We know it's hitting the right sort of power levels then. It feels right and it feels well put together. One of the remaining questions is, is it accurate enough? Time to drop a decent set of optics on it, so a nice, short Vector Optics Veyron not only looks the part, but gives it a crystal clear image from its first focal plane setup. 40 meters outdoor then. Here goes. Well, I don't think this little bullpup or this scope have let themselves down at all with results like that. I'm really pleased. And by the way, this is the smaller 4 to 16 by 44 vector scope. Personally, I would prefer to put the slightly larger one if I was doing that target work. Sadly, they'd all sold out at the time of doing this review. Maybe next time. The one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the price. Well, this one is currently available as one of the very first ones in the country to give anyone bragging rights with your mates, and it's available from you know where. It will set you back around £1,245 UK, which puts it around or below a lot of the, say, FX range, with arguably better or similar engineering and some more innovative design features on board. I've tried so many rifles and bullpups in my time doing this. Some are just yet another similar gun, and occasionally one comes out that tries to break the mould. Ed guns, for example, are fully guilty of thinking outside the box, and the result is very, very obvious and very refreshing. This is firmly in the same box, a company prepared to push the envelope. I realise this isn't for everyone out there, but the world is a better place with forward-thinking companies like this, and it is a real pleasure to use and carry with its balance and lighter weight. And of course, it's far more exclusive than the mass-produced and mass-marketed items out there. For the FAC guys out there, I am going to try and get hold of one of these in full power and compare, which should be quite fun. That's it. Usual thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, please. Subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe worth doing so, because there are even more new and different guns being reviewed as we speak. Hit the alarm bell to be notified when they're posted. As always, there is all this lot to get involved with. And all it leaves me to say is stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully I'll see you next Friday. Thank you so much for watching.